Good evening. I'm uh, Greg Gregory, a pastor of Spring Hill Presbyterian Church, and uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get through um, after two or three weeks where I've not been able to pull it off. I got some help over here beside me, and uh, I might as well take this is Bobby. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, my wife, our, uh, her, and I'm her husband. We've been trying working at that for 55 years and something had changed. And um, I'm asked Bobby if she'd start us off with a prayer. Sweetie. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that we have now. A new day with birds singing, whether the sun be out or rain be coming down. Um, the birds still manage to sing depending on the rain or the sun. And Father, bless us all as we gather here or as we gather in our houses or as we gather together in our cars. Father, bless us now as we get ready to hear a sermon today preached on your word, preached to all of us, and preached around the world because we're using the lectionary. Father, thank you so much for our families, for those who care for us, and bless all of us in this in these unsettling times of COVID, of of picketing, of walking, of going to the grocery store uncertain about what we'll find on the shelves. And Father, just bless us now. Help those who are sick, heal them if it be to your will, Lord, and bless us all. And we love you, Lord. Thank you so much for everything. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I um, want to move directly into our scripture lessons for today. Uh, the, they are There are two of them. Uh, the first is from Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 1 through 15, and then one that is related to it in ways you might be surprised about um, in Romans 4, um, 20 through 5, 11. So let's listen carefully so that we can hear God speaking to each of us. Genesis 18, verses 1 through 11. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season. And your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. 
Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed at him, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I, I did not laugh. She was afraid. He said, oh, yes, you did laugh. And the reading from um, Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 20, reading th into chapter 5. Paul is, of course, writing to the Roman church. He never had been to the Roman church before. So this is his kind of letter of introduction, introduction to them. And, and he's, um, as he says in his beginning, his introduction, he's sharing some things with them the, so that he could receive things from them in exchange in terms of um, theological thoughts and knowledge of God. So here's what uh, Paul writes it in verse 20. Abraham did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in the faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him as righteousness, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised our, our Lord Jesus uh, from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Into chapter five. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves God's love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'll be mentioned in her prayers some of the things that we have been experiencing in this year of 2020. Uh, we started the year off um, getting ready for an impeachment trial, listening to arguments back and forth as to whether our president should or should not be removed from the office of president. And after that, when we wondered what next, along came the code, the COVID-19 virus that has first shut us into our homes and, and, and locked us out of our worship and, um, and, and, and forced us to, to, to expose ourselves at risk whenever we go outside the house. And, 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 and 
when we are wearing masks or not wearing masks, uh, uh, e either to either to protect ourselves and others from getting the, the disease, or else perhaps to to be showing that we think that the disease is not really as strong as other people think that it is, and it's just been one thing after another until two weeks ago. Yes, two weeks ago and a few more days since an officer knelt on the knee of a man who was, who has had been knelt on the knee, thank, on the neck. thank you, Bobby. That's another reason she's scared to know, uh, is to keep me honest, uh, and, 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 and carried him to his death as he cried out for his mama. And the reaction to that, after that, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, what next, what next, what next? But today's reading from the Old Testament itself poses the question, what next, what next, what next? Because in the 12th chapter, the beginning of the 12th chapter, uh, uh, actually, Right before the beginning of the 12th chapter, uh, Abram's grandfather had moved uh, from, from Ur to, to Haran, and there he died. And then uh, Abraham's father had moved the, the folks along. Um, from there, they haven't, having left their Ur of their Chaldees, which was their natural home. And and, uh, and and while they were moving into Canaan, as they were supposed to move, boom, at the beginning of chapter one, the Lord encountered Abraham, Abram and said, and call, gave him a call, a promise that he, God, that, was going to, that God was going to make him the, the father of many nations and that he would make uh, Abram be a blessing, and all who blessed him would be would be blessed also. And so that was the great promise. And immediately, Abram gathered up his wife Sari and his nephew Lot, and they separated from the family there at Haran, and then off they went. And the the scripture. Uh, in the New Testament says that no, no disappointment caused him to waver. And yet, and yet as they wandered, he and Sari and Lot down toward through Canaan, they found that there were other people there. And so they kept away from them. And then by the time they got to the edge of Canaan, they discovered that the famine had set into Canaan. And so, and so they went on into Egypt because there was food in Egypt. On the way into Egypt, now listen to this. Abram said to Sari, now if I go in and tell you, tell them that you are my wife, they will kill me. I'm not sure why Abram thought they would kill him, but Scripture says they thought he he thought they would kill him. And so he said to Sari, pretend that you are my sister. And that way they will take deal, deal kindly with us. So Sari kept, did what Abram asked her to do, pretended that she was Abram's sister. And she caught the sight of the officers of Pharaoh. And they mentioned her Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, bring her into my house. And so for we know not how long, Sari lived in the house of Pharaoh. And uh, no, no, no disappointment made Abram waver concerning the promise of God. And yet, he, in effect, sent his wife in to be with the Pharaoh. 
They got out of that. The question was, what's next in their, in their journey? And incident after incident came up. They encouraged, they encountered uh, uh, priest Melchizedek in chapter 14. Uh, and, and then uh, in this, here in this uh, chapter, we hear that uh, Sarah laughed while she was overhearing the conversation between her husband and uh, the three men that had come when she heard the promise. Sarah was getting old by that. She was, I think, uh, uh, approaching 90. And, uh, uh, yeah. but now in the 17th chapter, in a similar situation, said the same thing about Abram. He laughed when God said that that the that the promise was going to come true. So be patient. And so the question of what's next is a question that vexed Abram and Sarah just as much as it vexes us. What could possibly this turbulent life we are living. Well, here I want your hearing and our experiencing of the Lord. While we were still Christ died for us. That's how it came in. That's what came first. And so as we trust Jesus Christ, trust the Son of God, then it's reckoned to us as right. Not that we're doing everything right. What a wonderful example Abram is of not doing everything right and still be being reckoned righteous. Just with God, in relationship with God, a relationship that when we wander and, and are tempted away, God chooses to accept us anyway and call us back and call us to glory in God, not only in glory, but also give rejoice in our Adversity that we face because we understand that as we face adversity, particularly as we face it together, and 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 I, I I I'm not sure where we are headed as a as a together state of North Carolina, but as we wonder when we will again worship in the sanctuary, the numbers are moving in the wrong direction, and we need to ourselves maybe we'll even have to be cut out longer than we had anticipated God is grace if we establish our endurance if we see the gift of hope that endurance continues to develop us And the time will come. The time will come. And in fact, the time will come every day when we recognize we are being upheld by the grace and the mercy and the love of God in Jesus. What's next? What's next is our response to the God who holds us in belief. It's not something we have to create. It's not even something we have to make. God's call of Abraham got the ball rolling for him and Sarah. God's call to you and me keeps us, he keeps on calling us, picking us up, 
calling us back. What's next? What's next? Looking at our opportunity to serve God in the future. Be that the next moment, the next year, the next in response to what while we were yet Christ died so we sit together just now Christians redeemed and called to be in fellowship with God and one another so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ sustain us May the love of God, Father, keep us in fellowship. And may the Holy Spirit continue to burn in our hearts and in the hearts of those who love Him. So that we may do next what God calls us to do. Trusting God to provide all that we need to do what God us to do. In the name of the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit.